Welcome to NASA STEM EPDC Quick Bits Big Ideas in Science Content. NASA STEM Engagement and Educator Professional Development Collaborative provides NASA resources and STEM strategies for STEM engagement. In this series, we intend to reach educators, parents, and caregivers to quickly explain a specific big idea in STEM. We will introduce a NASA example of how this idea is applied in the real world. And finally, we will demonstrate step-by-step -step how to lead this activity at home or in the classroom with your students. You might invite your students to watch with you at that time. We invite you to join us as we learn more from our specialists. Let's get started. Hello and welcome. My name is Michelle Berry and I'm a NASA EPDC Education Specialist from Texas State University. Today we will be doing an activity that teaches students about the scientific concepts of natural selection and adaptations. The Next Generation Science Standards aligned with this activity can be found in the life science domain as shown on this slide. NASA is studying birds. Through eBird, an online bird database, and NASA Earth Observing Satellite data, we can view the life cycles of birds, which ultimately helps us understand our bird populations. NASA's Aqua Satellite can measure evaporation from oceans, water vapor in the atmosphere, clouds, precipitation, soil moisture, sea ice, land ice, and snow cover on the land and ice. The data gathered helps NASA identify how weather and climate change is affecting birds. Here we have the new animated eBird abundance map. This map shows where the American crows are throughout the year and in what numbers. NASA will continue its research on our bird populations. We will be doing an activity called Natural Selection and Adaptations in Bird Beaks. This lesson was developed by the GLOBE program, which is a worldwide program that brings together students, teachers, scientists, and citizens to promote science and learning about the environment. This activity was designed for students to think critically, explore and discover, and use the inquiry process as they examine the bird beaks. The learning goals and objectives include investigate how shape and structure of beaks affect the type of food that birds are able to eat. Describe how different types of bird beaks have adapted to feed on different foods within a specific habitat. And learn that birds with beaks that are better adapted will have a better rate of survival. Before we begin our activity, let's review some key vocabulary that will help you successfully guide your children through this lesson. As I mentioned earlier, the big idea for this lesson involves natural selection and adaptations. Natural selection is a mechanism of evolution. Organisms that are more adapted to their environment are more likely to survive and pass on the genes that aided their success. This process causes species to change and diverge over time. Adaptation is a change or the process of change by which an organism or species becomes better suited to its environment. Now would be a great time to ask your children or students to join us for our hands-on activity. I have a two-part question for you. Why do birds have beaks and what are they used for? Feel free to pause this video so you can discuss and write down your responses in your science journal. Birds use their beaks for acquiring food. They may dig, poke, peck, or even bite while searching for food. The more obvious reason that birds have beaks is that they use them for eating. Have you ever watched a mama bird feed their young? If so, then you know that they use their beaks to do so. Some birds use their beaks to assist when climbing trees. And then there are times that birds use their beaks for defense when in danger. For today's activity, we are going to focus on the beak being used to consume food. The shape and size of a bird's beak can tell us what it eats and sometimes how it catches its prey. Birds' beaks have a great range of specialized shapes to catch and eat different kinds of food. They adapted over time to help birds find food within their habitat, which allows them to survive. 
By natural selection, their beaks define what kind of food they can eat and whether or not they can survive. Although there are thousands and thousands of species of birds, we are going to learn about five types of birds in this activity. During this lesson, we will examine the beaks of the five birds and identify what they eat. We will also use some everyday tools found in your homes and food to make predictions, observations, and then test by exploring with the materials and supplies to draw some conclusions. The hummingbird is the smallest of birds measuring from three to five inches. They got their name because of the humming sound that is made when they flap their wings rapidly. Their beaks are very long and narrow, longer in proportion to their bodies, which makes it easier for them to probe deep inside flowers. And yes, you guessed it, they're searching for the nectar inside the flowers. Although we are most familiar with hummingbirds feeding on nectar, it's important to note that hummingbirds get their protein from small insects and spiders. The morning dove is the most abundant bird in North America. It has been described as a graceful bird with a slender tail and small head. It's usually light gray or a muted brown in color. Their habitat is one of the open country with lots and lots of scattered trees and woodland edges. Their beaks are short and shaped like a chisel. They eat almost exclusively seeds, but they feed their young crop milk by both of their parents. You will find doves on the ground using their beaks to peck and push trying to find those seeds. The duck is the common name for many species of the waterfowl family, which includes swans and geese. This aquatic bird can be found in both freshwater and seawater. Ducks have relatively long necks, webbed feet, and their bodies are typically round. The beak or bill tends to be broad and serrated or contains slits, which makes it easier to sift through the water as they find food such as aquatic plants, worms, insects, and fish. The robin is a migratory songbird, most notably recognized by its reddish-orange breast. It is mostly active during the day and roosts in large flocks at night. The robin's beak usually has some yellow on it. It's longer than the dove's beak, but very pointed and sharp. Robins eat fruits and berries and invertebrates like earthworms and caterpillars. And the last bird that we'll look at today is the eagle. Eagles are very large and powerful birds of prey. They build their nests in tall trees or cliffs. They're ranked at the very top of the food chain by eating fish, snakes, and small mammals like squirrels, raccoons, and rabbits. They will hunt for their own food, but they will also steal prey from other animals. It is not rare for them to take fish from the talons of other fish-eating birds. To represent our bird beaks, I'll be using the following items. A slotted spoon, a pair of chopsticks, a straw, scissors, and a pair of tweezers. For our bird food, you will need five containers filled with juice, large marshmallows, gummy bears and cooked rice, cooked noodles in water, and uncooked wild rice. You can also use non-food items as well in this activity. Some alternative materials are water, cotton balls, string, craft beads, and small pom-pom balls. Please wash all of the utensils and containers before you start the activity so that if you decide to use food, you may enjoy it afterwards. Feel free to brainstorm other tools that you can use to represent bird beaks. For example, if you don't have chopsticks, you may use a pair of tongs instead. If you have a science journal or some notebook paper, I would grab that too so that you can write down your predictions, you can record your observations, and at the end of the activity, write down your conclusions. Here is a link to the activity, which includes the materials list, along with the recording sheet that I use to make my chart inside the journal. Let's get started. Our task today is to identify which food best represents the food that our five birds eat and which tool best represents the type of beak that our five birds have. 
Once we identify the food, we will then try out the tools to see which one works best in picking up the food. Make your predictions and feel free to write those down in your journal. Think back to what hummingbirds eat. Which of these foods best represents what a hummingbird would eat? Yes, the juice is much like nectar. Now think about the hummingbirds and its shape of its beak. Try out each tool to figure out which tool makes more sense to use when drinking the nectar. The straw seems to be the best fit. Make sure to record your findings in your journal. In the first box, you will make note that the juice represents the nectar. Then place a check in the box for the tool that best represents the beak of a hummingbird, in this case, the straw. You can put an X in the other boxes. Moving on to the morning dove. Remember I shared that morning doves eat mostly seeds. Which food best represents seeds? You're right, wild rice looks very similar to seeds. Let's take a look at the tools or beaks that we have left. Try each tool and keep in mind that there may be more than one tool that works, but we are trying to find the best tool for picking up seeds. The tweezers seem to be the most effective. Grab your journal and record your data. Wild rice is the food that is similar to seeds. Put an X in the boxes of the tools that are not a fit and then place a check in the box of the tool that will be most effective when picking up seeds, the tweezers. We know that ducks spend a great deal of time in the water, therefore their food is usually found inside the water. Which of the foods left best represents aquatic bugs and animals? The cooked noodles in water seems to be the best choice. We have three tools left to experiment with. Use the chopsticks, scissors, and slotted spoon to see which tool can pick up the noodles. It looks like the slotted spoon is closest to the duck's beak or bill. Once again, you will record your data inside your journal by writing down noodles as the food and by placing X's by the tools that we have eliminated and those that are not effective. Then place a check in the box that best represents the beak of the duck. Robins use their beaks to gather fruits and berries for food. Do you think marshmallows or gummy bears best represent fruits and berries? I agree. Let's see if the scissors or the chopsticks will pick up the gummy bears best. The scissors just cut the bears in half, but the chopsticks work very nicely. We need to write down our findings by filling in gummy bears for the food and putting a check in the box for the chopsticks and X's for the rest of the tools. Our final bird that we will look at today is the eagle. It's pretty obvious that the marshmallows represent the meat and the scissors must represent the beak. Let's finish the activity by testing with the materials we have left to make sure. The scissors are able to cut and shred just like the beak of the eagle when finding its food. Record your findings for the eagle by filling in marshmallows for the food and placing a check for scissors and X's in the rest of the boxes. I think we have come to some conclusions and now have a recording of our findings that will be helpful when continuing our research on birds. If you'd like to take this activity one step further, I wanted to share a couple of fun ideas for you to consider. You can try this activity again with different items or Try moving the food from the container to a small cup using only the tools to get a greater understanding of how the bird uses its beak to feed itself and its offspring. Before we go, let's wrap up by going over what we have accomplished with this activity. We first investigated how the shape and structure of bird beaks affects the type of food that birds are able to eat. We were also able to describe how different types of bird beaks have adapted to feed on different foods with a specific habitat. And finally, we learned that birds with beaks that are better adapted will have a better rate of survival. There really is so much more to learn about birds. On the screen, I have posed two questions for you to think about as you continue to study about birds. 
What would happen if all birds had the exact same beak type? And what would happen if there was only one type of food for birds to eat? I have also included some great resources for you to check out from NASA and the GLOBE program. Use the links to find out how NASA uses the research and data collected. Thanks for watching this NASA STEM EPDC Quick Bit. Don't forget to check out the description below for more information and links.